Creating a contents estimate can be a very tedious task. There's often many, many items to document in a contents inventory. So one of the features that SimSol provides is an Excel import feature, which what you can do is have a content specialist or even have the insured pre-fill the inventory for you using Excel. And you can take that Excel document, import it directly into your contents estimate, which will save you a tremendous amount of time in the long run. The import process is very simple, and the Excel sheet is pre-formatted to simplify things for whoever's filling that document out as well. So we're going to cover how to export that document, how to fill it out, and how to bring it back into SimSol to complete your contents estimate. So to get started, I actually want to be in the claim grid. So I'm currently in a claim. I'm going to get out of this claim and go to the claim grid where all my claims are listed. Next, what I want to do is make sure that the claim is highlighted that I want to export a blank contents Excel document for. So I can email that out to the insured, email that out to my content specialist, have them fill it out and send it back to me. So with the claim highlighted, I just go up to Tools at the top here, and there is an option Contents Excel File. I'll click on that. This will bring up a Browse window here where I can select where I want to export this particular Excel document. You can notice down at the bottom here, it does name the Excel document automatically based on the file number I had selected. So in this case, there's a policy number and the insured's last name given to the Excel document by default. So I'm going to go ahead and save it into this folder here called Contents Excel. I'll save. And that completes the export process. So now you would take that Excel document, email it to whoever you're going to have fill out the inventory. And now we'll go take a look at that actual Excel document so we can see what it looks like, how to fill it out, and prepare it to be imported back into SimSol. Okay, so I've opened up the Excel document that we just exported. And as you can see, we format the first row for you to describe what needs to go into each column for the contents inventory. So starting from the left, we have the room name, then we have quantity, unit of measure, item description, the age in years, comments, the make, the model, serial number, where it was purchased, estimated unit cost, the depreciation percentage, and total replacement cost. So if you decide to send this to your insured to have them fill it out, obviously it's a good idea to provide the insured with a little bit of instruction as to what needs to be filled out and how it should be filled out. So there are a couple rules about the Excel document that need to be followed. You'll want to make sure that they're included in your email to the insured before they start filling this out. The better you can inform them before they start filling it out, the less chance of error and the less work it will be for you in the long run. So first we'll start with what fields are required to import these items. There are only six fields that are actually required for this to work. Everything else can be filled out after the fact. Some of the information that's not required, your insured's not going to know what that information is anyway, so we wouldn't expect them to enter that. So the fields that are required are these ones over here, columns A through E. That would include the room, the quantity, unit of measure, item description, and the age and years of each item. And then the only other required field is column K, which is the estimated unit cost. That's where your insured will enter the price that they paid for that item and whether or not you require them to submit a receipt or any type of documentation, uh, that's up to you. All these other fields do not have to be filled out by the insured. However, if they want to or they have the information, they can fill it out. Now these last two columns, the depreciation percentage and the total replacement cost, you'd probably want your insured to not fill those out or even attempt to fill those out because they probably have no idea as to what those would be. So in your instructions, let them know not to worry about those two columns, that you'll handle those upon receiving the Excel document from them. Now your content specialist, if this person is a little more versed in contents estimating, they can feel free to go ahead and enter information in any of these columns because they may know more about depreciation, uh, what the actual total replacement cost of these items might be, and you'll feel more comfortable knowing that your content specialist has filled out this document for you versus just the insured because you know that specialist has a better idea of what's going to ultimately happen with these items in your estimate. Now a couple other requirements. 
One has to do with formatting. There's one particular column in here where you do need to worry about formatting because there's only a certain type of entry that will be accepted, and that's column C, the unit of measure. You have two different options for unit of measure. You can either put in EA, which stands for each, or PR, which stands for pair. Any other unit of measure will not be accepted and will create an error when you try to import this Excel doc. So make sure that that's documented in your email to the insured as well. And make sure your content specialist is aware of this also. Another common mistake that we see is in column A, the room name. Every item does have to have the room name entered there. We often see where somebody will put the room name in column A and then enter 10 or 20 items underneath that particular row and leave out the room name with the assumption that all these items belong to that room. That will not work. We do need to have a room name for every item. In just a moment, I'm going to show you a contents Excel document that's filled out so you'll actually see what this should look like and you'll get a better idea of what I'm referring to. And then lastly, when it comes to formatting, do not allow the insured or your content specialist to place any blank rows within the spreadsheet. So if you enter 20 items, don't insert a blank row before you start the next room because when you go to import this Excel doc, it will find that blank row and think that your inventory has come to an end at that row and all the remaining items will be left out until you delete that row and try to import again. And at the end of this video, I'll reiterate these three rules when it comes to formatting just so you don't forget uh, and just to enforce those ideas. So let's go ahead and take a look at a Excel doc that's filled out so we can better see what this is going to look like before we go to import. Okay, so here's an Excel doc that's been filled out and it's ready for import into SimSol. So once again, looking at column A, you see every particular item in this document does have a room name and that has to happen. Now in this particular case, the content specialist just chose to use the room name contents. So when I import this into SimSol, SimSol will create a room called contents and place all these items into that room in the actual contents estimate. If you do have different room names, those room names will get created and SimSol will import the items into each respective room within the contents estimate as well. So let's go ahead and go across the spreadsheet here just to take a look at each column and how they're filled out. So moving over next is quantity. Simple enough, that's a numeric value. It must be the quantity of the items in there. Make sure that if the unit of measure is a pair, that they're actually counting the number of pairs of these items. So if you have four pairs of shoes, the quantity would be four. Next column is the unit of measure. As I mentioned before, there's two acceptable answers there, each, EA, and pair, PR. The next column over is the item description. This is just a generic description of the item. This will go into the estimate after importing into SimSol. Next column is the age in years. This must be a round number. We don't do 1.5 years or 0.5 years to denote a half a year. If something is brand new, just leave the age in years as zero. We need the age in years so we can apply the correct amount of depreciation to the items after the import. Now you'll see that the columns F, G, and H, which are the comments, make, and model, have been left blank. That really comes down to the adjuster, whether or not you require that, or the carrier if they require that as well. In this particular case, we're not going to require that those get filled out, so we'll leave those blank, and that's fine. That This document will still import without those fields filled out. They are not required. The next column, I, is serial number. We do have some serial numbers. We don't have them all, but the more information that can be provided, better. Column J, where these items were purchased, don't have that information, so we're going to leave that blank. Moving over, column K, estimated unit cost. Remember, once again, this is a required field, so this does need to be filled out. The next column over is the depreciation percentage. Your insured, obviously, is going to have no idea what the depreciation percentage is for these items, so they'll leave that blank. Your content specialist might know what the depreciation percentage will be based on the age of each item. So if they are comfortable with that, you're comfortable with that, have them fill that out. And then finally moving over to column M, the total replacement cost, which is the estimated cost to replace every one of these contents items. Typically that's going to be entered by your content specialist, and you probably wouldn't want to take the word of the insured on these values without doing some research or having your content specialist do their research first. Okay, so the Contents Excel doc is filled out. We're now ready to import this into SimSol and let it create our contents estimate for us. So I'm going to jump back into SimSol 
and we'll be ready for import and we'll walk through that process next. Okay, so I'm back in SimSol. I'm ready to import that contents Excel document. I'm going to go ahead and open up the claim that we originally exported the Excel doc from. So I'll open that up. I'm going to go to my contents estimate, go to the inventory of items screen. As you can see, I have no areas created yet because I'm going to let the Excel doc create them for me. So to begin the Excel import, I just come to this button at the top, Excel import. This brings up the import contents window where it says pick Excel file. I'll just simply hit this browse button here. I'll navigate to where I've got that Excel document saved and there it is. I'll go ahead and highlight it and hit open. Now because the Excel document did not have a depreciation percentage entered, it's now letting me know that I can enter a generic or default depreciation to apply to all items upon import and then I can go back and adjust those percentages after I've imported all the items or I could use a depreciation table to apply depreciation to each item based on the age of each contents inventory item as well. So for this exercise I'm just going to enter the depreciation percentage of say 10 percent and I'll click OK. Next what happens is a verification. You'll see in step 2 we're now checking the columns to make sure all the data is valid. Step 3 we're verifying the room data making sure that's valid. And finally this box will let us know if there are any verification errors. If there was an error, we would see it in this window and we would be notified that, hey, you have a column with some invalid information and that might include something like a unit of measure that wasn't entered correctly or maybe a column where you were supposed to have entered a numeric value and you typed in a word, something like that. This will let you know exactly what the problem is so you can go resolve it and then try the import again. So this one seems to pass the grade. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here and click on import. Import process begins. And you'll see that's created my contents estimate inventory area here in the inventory of items screen. Over to the right, I've got totals for this estimate, replacement cost, the depreciation, and the actual cash value. And if I go open this particular area, just like I normally would, when the virtual scope sheet displays, I'll click on list, and there's my contents inventory. If there's anything that needs to be changed, I can just simply go to that item, double click it, and override like I typically would. So now that these items are in the estimate, they behave just like they would if I would have picked them out of the SimSol virtual scope sheet. And I can make changes, edits, remove, delete, whatever I need to do to these items after the fact. So that's the import process. Let's once again take a look at those three formatting factors that must be addressed when filling out the Excel doc. So I'm going to switch back to the Excel doc once again. And here we are looking at the Excel doc. So once again, Columns A through E are required, must be filled out. Column K is required, must be filled out. Column C, unit of measure, there's only two acceptable formats. That's EA for each or PR for pair. And then column A, we must have a room name for every item. And then finally, there are no rows or empty rows within this Excel doc at all. If I scroll down to the bottom, Every row is filled out until I get to the very end, and that's how SimSol knows when the inventory is done, when it's importing all your items, when it comes to a blank record, which would be like this one here. This is where SimSol knows to end the import because there's no items in this particular row. And that's the Contents Excel import. It allows you to delegate the task of contents inventory documentation to someone else while you work on, say, the building estimate, other portions of the claim, and then you can import that work in and finalize it in SimSol.